intend to make our initial approach on the north coast of Elephant Island heading toward Point Wild. That's an appropriate starting point. We sailed from the Falkland Islands to head south toward the Antarctic Peninsula. I have waited for this opportunity to embark on a coldest adventure and appreciate the sceneries up close of the last continent in my bucket list, Antarctica. It's exciting uh, atmosphere around the ship, and it should be. It's, uh, it's a wonderful experience awaiting just ahead of us now. 13 miles to Elephant Island, so we're going to start getting into the ice pretty soon. On board the ship, naturalist experts were with us to provide lectures about early expeditions inland on the Antarctic continent and for us to learn about some of the Antarctic mammals and birds. These lectures were always preceded by audiovisual presentations of do's and don'ts while we cruised along the pristine environment of the Antarctic Peninsula. They were also the ones making commentaries from the bridge while we were appreciating the sceneries and enjoying the views outside. Just Hello again, this is Mark, your naturalist, and we're going to slide right on here. So, get your cameras out. Our first major iceberg on the starboard side. Right hand side of the ship. Make your way over. It was around noon at 41 degrees Fahrenheit temperature when we came close to the scenic views cruising along the Elephant Island. Cold but excited. For some of us, this first day encounter of icebergs up this close in a good weather was something to be appreciated, a great adventure and once in a lifetime experience. We continued to see more icebergs of all sizes and shapes, floating freely in the open water. Much of an iceberg is below the surface and typically only about one tenth of the iceberg is above the water. It's pretty nice up here on the bridge. <laughs> right on the knob there. Standing from the deck of the ship, we had a clear view of the ice-covered mountainous elephant island off the coast of Antarctica. The island's name was attributed to both its elephant head-like appearance and the sighting of elephant seals by the early explorers. On the island is the Endurance Glacier, its main discharge glacier and named after a Royal Navy ship which anchored off the glacier in support of Joint Services expedition to the Elephant Island. On day two of our scenic cruising, I walk up to the side of drifting ice floes on port side and starboard side as we pass by toward our next destination. Too early to be up for some, but soon the captain started making announcements to update us on where we were and what we may expect to encounter for the day. Sorry for this early morning wake up call. I need to be the, uh, the early morning rooster, but I thought you would appreciate an update. It's been a busy night, as you can imagine, between the ice and the restricted visibility. Your bridge team did an outstanding job. And uh, in about an hour or so, with any luck at all, we should start seeing some icebergs. The intended plan was to proceed to Esperanza Station. But due to large concentration of non-navigable ice, it was decided to change plan. For this morning, we're not going to be able to get down to Hope Bay and Esperanza Station, unfortunately. But we are going to give you a try to get as close as we can, give you a nice view of three icebergs up ahead. Then we'll turn around, we'll head north, and uh, then we'll head for our next target, Admiralty Bay, as scheduled, about 1430 to 1500. So enjoy the icebergs coming up.
it was a cloudy and cold moment of the day. But the view we were seeing was an awesome display of nature, only in Antarctica. After passing in between the last two icebergs, we turn around heading north, which would have been the last update we hear before our approach to Admiralty Bay, until the captain excitedly made a new announcement about an hour later. Dead ahead of the ship right now, about 1.4 miles. We're going to come to within about uh, 300 meters of it. And it is very impressive. It's a good way for a finale for our icebergs here. After we go around it, then we're going to go for Admiralty Bay. But uh, this is one you got to see. As we headed closer to this iceberg, a section of it came off into the ocean. And there was plenty of glacier ice and water to be avoided that's causing the ship to be diverted around it. From the front upper deck, we had a spectacular view of this tabular iceberg, which was estimated to be two miles long and a mile wide. We got pretty close to it at a safe distance where we could take some nice and memorable pictures. cloudy skies and just before noon, we proceeded to Admiralty Bay at King George Island and by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we approached the entrance to the bay. Ladies and gentlemen, another thing where we're very fortunate, local weather. Yeah. Look how calm it is, hardly a breath of wind. Look how clear it is, the rocks and the uh, areas around the uh, fjord all apparently open and no problems there. The local weather is very much in our favor. At about one o'clock, you can see a small refuge hut in bright red, very nicely against a snowfield now. That is the Ecuadorian field station. There's no sign of a flag, so I don't think it's occupied this summer. But there's a number of these small summer stations around King George Island and elsewhere. You can see some of the glaciers and, and even that dark mountain a little bit off to our right shine in that area. So take a look and kind of enjoy, but this is Antarctica and this is why you're here. Inside the bay were the presence of small pieces of ice and a few penguins climb on and enjoy the ride, watching us and also us watching them. And up on the side of the hill, a colony and thousands of penguins were observing every move we make. So, we're going to work our way over and check out the Poland station with their Polish resupply ship right ahead of us. Our approach was slow until we stopped in front of the Arktowski Polish Antarctic Station, which is managed by the Polish Academy of Sciences. Its main research areas include oceanography, marine biology, geology, and a few other ones. After two hours of scenic viewing of the Admiralty Bay, we swing around to head on to our next destination. And we're bound for Dolman Bay. So we're going on down Bransford Strait, down the coast of King George Island. Gerlach Strait will start us off as we make our way down to the Turk and Wakey and Amber Islands for a new buyer channel. We began our day three of scenic cruising Antarctica by transiting the Skolart Canal at five in the morning and then entering the Dalman Bay and Gerlach Strait where we later encountered a group of orcas, killer whale. 
So nicely into the leg straight. We are uh, a little bit early. That's intentional because we're just going to snoop around. We got Paradise Harbor coming up on the left. So have your breakfast, charge your camera batteries, and join us on the open decks. Nature had treated us with great views and good weather, although it was still cold and at freezing temperature. We also encountered more icebergs and passed snow-capped mountains along the way. It's one of the loveliest spots along the Antarctic Peninsula. It really does look like paradise, especially on a morning like this. Calm sea, patches of blue sky, sunlight just catching the tops of the mountains. It's called Paradise Harbor, a perfect natural harbor used by whaling ships in the 19th and early 20th centuries. We can see the transatlantic mountains of the peninsula, the permanent ice caps that sits on top of them, and the glaciers in between the mountains. The ship stops in front of the Chilean station with its large painted Chilean flag on the rock. We were here in Paradise for less than an hour before turning and proceeding towards Neumeyer Channel. Heading for the Neumeyer Channel, we transited through the Gerlach Strait and for us to be filled and see more of Antarctica's wonderful landscapes and icebergs. Sailing and going the other way is the cruise ship Zandam, also doing the scenic cruise and checking out this part of the continent. And then, passing the National Geographic Orion ship as we entered the Neumeyer Channel. The Neumeyer Channel presented us with more interesting portraits of ice-capped mountains, glaciers, and weird-looking icebergs. Some glaciers appeared to be about to break off, and pieces of ice just waiting to fall down into the water. I was hoping I'd witness this amazing event, but this wasn't my day. This iceberg looked like a royal crown. Another one resembles a white flower in bloom floating in the ocean or a monster ready to take a bite out of whoever gets in its way. This landscape appears like ice pouring down and frozen in time while in the process. And lastly, a ghost who's about to scare anyone that comes near it. Overjoyed with these sceneries, we sometimes look closer to the ocean waves around us and we didn't get disappointed. Migrating whales were with us. They were also on a journey of their own. And at past two in the afternoon, we were out of the channel to proceed for the rest of our day's sailing adventure. in the morning of day four of our scenic cruising and when most of us were having breakfast we passed through snow showers and increased wind speed was blowing our way a nice view of the deception island our next and last scenic destination of the antarctica peninsula would have been preferred but the day's weather blocked us from seeing the clearer view of the island so it's a a treacherous place to visit. I'm just coming up alongside that now on the port bow. Early explorers named it Deception Island on account of its outward deceptive appearance as a normal island, when the narrow entrance of Neptune's bellows revealed it rather to be a ring around a flooded caldera of an active volcano. This island previously held a whaling station and is now a tourist destination 
and a scientific outpost. We had a very productive run during Antarctica, exceeding even our own expectations. And I'm very pleased that we're able to show you such a cross section of the peninsula. And since we will be experiencing strong winds for the entire passage northbound to Cape Horn. We now leave this remarkable part of the world behind us, and we hope that you have found it to be a rewarding and educational experience. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone.